They literally can say no. Hmm? No, you see, because last year there was a problem with people talking about um, this thing being that you had to pay, so I'm making sure I'm going through this here slowly. Good, let me start the action now. So, check this out. We are going to use Morningstar this semester with respect to tr our trading portfolios. More importantly, and since this is being recorded, nobody can tell me otherwise. We are not trading any bonds, any commodities, any currencies. I said so before. You can, however, trade bond funds. And bond funds, you can research, your university students. But they're nothing more than mutual funds that just hold bonds, okay? You can trade index funds, you can trade mutual funds, but it all comes down to the allocations of which you all will decide. I purposely did not teach allocations beforehand. All right? I, however, taught them last Wednesday with the hope that you would have gone and reviewed knowing if somebody is an aggressive investor, how you would want to split their money up, and if somebody is a very conservative investor, how you would wish to speak to split their money up, if you get where I'm coming from. So having that in mind, you should have an idea as to what a basic allocation is. And today, when I do or want to create this portfolio, I'm going to actually build um, using some allocation principles as well. Simple allocation principles. Note, however, the market should have closed at five. All right? So there should have been no activity. I will not make a profit according to these trades. So anything that you see in the green today, Anything that is green today, you would recognize as um, just a daily activity. If the stock went up, you would see green. It doesn't mean if that I would have green in my portfolio simply because the markets have closed. Okay, good. So the first thing I want people to do is when you go on the home screen, Morningstar.com. For those watching online, I'm highlighting it for you right there. And I think my mouse is supposed to got a clicky thing. If I am not remembering, then that's unfortunate. Yeah, so I am recording, good. So, however, you go right here and you see sign up, you click sign up. You put your name, you could even use a fake name, I really don't care, I just want the results. Email address, use an email that you check regularly because when you have the portfolio or when you create the portfolio, there's an option every time you trade to get feedback on how a particular stock is doing. Okay, so you would want it to be at an email or in an email or at an email address that you check regularly. If you are quick, you can sign up right now. If not, you could just watch what I'm doing on the screen and then go back to the video later because you have to start trading this Friday and that date will be for those that don't remember today's Tuesday. So that'll be 28th, yeah. the 28th of February, 2020 at 9 a.m. Well, 10 because you're opening a little later because it's Eastern, well, daylight savings time. All right, so all of this stuff at the bottom, you don't have to, for the purpose, well, these two here, you don't have to use for the purpose of the course, but definitely you need to accept the terms and conditions, okay? So once you're signed up, don't choose a, a paid option. Anything that is talking about paid is not what you want for the basics of this course. You only want to set up a portfolio that makes sense for you at this time, okay? Good. So I'm going to sign in. I've done this over the years. I use this email address for junk. I actually set this up after I graduated from UE for those that might be interested because I was the first person to ever jump in the fountain out there. I'm the fountain man. If anybody heard about a guy years ago, I jumped in that fountain, it was me. You do that stuff when you get first class on so nothing happens to you. Good. Start the, yes. Just click on start the free trial, right? No. <laughs> nothing but the start the free trial. Just sign up. Right. And then another one. No. Free, free trial is what you want? Yeah. No. There's nothing but no free trial that you should be looking at. Just continue. continue. Not, no, sorry. Good, good. Thank you for raising that. So for those watching online, Nothing but no free trial, nothing but pay. Just go ahead because they allow you to use it. The free trial would allow you to use all the paid functions, mm -hmm. but for a period of time. And that's where a lot of people get in problems. So no free trials, okay? Sign in. See how people pay extra attention because I, I actually check in my P's and, you know, dot, and dot in my I's. 
people paying extra attention. Crossing my teeth, checking my piece. Thank you. Crossing my teeth. Yes, please. You have a question. Come again. Agree. Scroll down to the bottom and select agree. There, there's going to be something on that page that prompts you to go for it. If not, if it's not moving, it might be a problem with the internet, but it should. They, like, just make sure you don't choose a free trial. I literally spent five minutes explaining this. So I hope nobody does this. Just make sure you don't choose a free trial or any paid options. You should, once everything is well and good, you may have to verify through your email address you already got through. Me? Yeah. Uh, no? No. All right. Agree. You may. Hmm? All right. Good. So if you got through already, you should have come to this page. So the next thing you have to do, portfolio right here in the header bar, you click on that bad boy. All right. Now, obviously, I would have had over the years a bunch of um, portfolios that I set up just for setting up sake. And the names are, were just things that were on my mind at the time. So the Ernie and Burt scandal a few years back. And then Pablo Escobar and uh, the Narco series is one of my favorite series, so don't mind all of that. Today I put tests and then say, you know what, let me just mess with some students, so I just spelled it testes. Um, however, when I was just going back over some stuff. So the first thing you, you all might want to do is to cre click create. And then you go to new portfolio, all right? Upon coming to new portfolio, the only things you want to do here is to set up the portfolio name. You can call it whatever your fund's name is, because I hope you all recognize you should have given your fund a fund. Yes, most of you did. Some of you did not. And the currency you were trading is USD, because as I told you, it's a US denominated fund, not a Barbadian dollar fund. Again, don't worry if you made that mistake in the... Uh, prospectus, my main thing is to grade you against your um, investment philosophy. How well you can actually stick to that, okay? And most importantly, and students leave this out a lot, track cash flows. Make sure that it's clicked. So I'm going to do another fund here called Testes 2. And the next thing is, this is where a lot of students get it wrong. Watch very carefully. A lot of students somehow believe that you can start setting up your trades from this point. And yes, in theory you can, but it's gonna mess you up in the long run, especially when it comes to your cash being depleted. Here's what I mean. You're going to start with a million dollars, correct? US. If you just started putting stocks in there, you never set up how much cash you were supposed to start with to begin with, which means later on, if you put cash in and you wanted to, because this allows you to, go back and put the cash at the beginning, you just have too much extra work to do. So my advice has always been, simply just give this fund a name, make sure the currency is in US dollars, and track cash flows. What that means is, again, any trade that you make would be crossed or would be debited against a cash pool. In this case, a million dollars, all right? So then just go to done, like how you and your exes are, done. Right. At this point, you will choose, you will come to this screen and you will choose portfolio updates. You don't have to. My advice would be yes, you should. Because every week when you do a report, because your first report will be due next week, Friday, every week you're supposed to give me at least some kind of performance, um, explaining the performance, not just the rationale behind what your trades. And by now, because you have a philosophy, you could easily tell me why. You could tell me how the news affected it. In some cases, like today, you would have told me about coronavirus uh, having, you know, destroyed your portfolio because the entire market crashed. And by, 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 by the way, that's a learning experience. You call that systemic risk. No matter what you did today, you lost money unless you went into bonds. So you call this systemic risk. You had a systemic attack today, which to me, is nothing to let, uh, fret about, all right? Unless I hear about zombies, I am not concerned too much about corona. Even if I become infected with it and I'm, I'm at death's door, I still won't sell. I still won't sell. I, I'll be honest about that, okay? I won't trade, I won't sell anything, I would buy more. I would buy more. Sell, not sell gift to your- Gift? 
I ain't gifting, they will go and find a way to get their money. The whole point being is, is that I it will not sell. That's the point. Okay. I, I would not panic and say, oh, shoot, I didn't let me sell. No. The, the stock will be there. Whoever will get it will get it. But it will be there. Okay? The, but that's where you're contrarian. You said the first one is human? Next Friday. Next Friday. You get a week to trade. So you start this Friday, trade. Next you get Friday plus up to Friday to trade. Hmm? Next Friday, the first up deep up upload. Next Friday. Yes. The first upload. Come again? The market, yeah, there's no trading on weekends except for currencies. And you're not trading currencies. All right, good. So we are moving past this point now. And I, I should have brought another camera to show who's asking questions, you know. So that I personally can remember. So that when you or somebody else repeat the same thing, we just only like and say, remember this time at this date, anyways. <laughs> damn, damn at you. When is Really? I am, I am not Harvey Weinstein, nor am I R. Kelly. So for Mark's friend, you can say, oh yeah, we need it that we are there when it asks a question. No, uh, let me move on, because I, I, I burn in data and time. So, <laughs> and your <laughs> portfolio updates is checked. This will save you a lot of trouble when it comes to those calculations. Trust me. Trust me. It will save you a lot of trouble. If you don't understand the screen that we will see in a bit, those updates help you to at least get an idea as to what your daily returns were and your weekly returns for the portfolio and the individual stocks that you hold, okay? Trust me on it. It makes life way easier. So you then select done, like you and your exes, and you come to this standard stock portfolio page where the only thing you should see at this point is a heading called default cash and then things like current price, change, percentage change, shares held, market value, weight, analysis report, which doesn't really give you much to begin with. And uh, if you paid, you would have had more of a benefit from this column here, Morningstar rating for funds and Morningstar rating for stocks. And that's the only thing you would see for now. The first step after seeing this is to highlight or hover over default cash, okay? and select edit. That puts you to this page where you make your first deposit of cash. For this semester, once you begin trading, you will only need to deposit cash once. The one million that Kobe will be giving you. And in this case, today, because always select dates, okay? Tw uh, February 25th. 2020, Kobe would be giving me, in this example, one million US dollars, okay? That's one million here, right? Help an old man's eyes. Well, help your own eyes. Well, so that's six zeros, so it's one million, right? All right, good. Because I've seen 10,000 before and 10 million. Yes, so I'm, I'm making sure I cross in all the T's and dotting all the I's, according to Xavier. Hmm? Um, you can do the deposit now, actually, if you want. It, that's smart. Mm -hmm. If you set it up, no, do the deposit now. Just don't start trading to Friday. Okay. Right? Do the deposit now and sit on money. Get familiar with the app. In fact, I would encourage you to do a practice portfolio and mess around over these next two days where you will lose, lose money. You need to feel comfortable with losing money. In fact, there's a student, the same student, told me that they were contrarian, but then came to me saying, Sir, I felt so bad. I felt so bad about the market losing money today. And they say, you know what? This is why I spent a month telling you, be very sure about who you are. Because look at how no, I could grade you in incorrectly. Because if you told me you were more of a trend investor, I have no problems. You do your thing. But for me, right now, you should be excited. You'll be like, let me wait and see when this bleeding stops so it can swoop in, right? And start buying up stuff. You get where I'm coming from? Different philosophy. So you can't change philosophies? No, no. <laughs> No, once you, remember, you are, no, watch it now. You, you are a person that's involved in customer service. So to tell me that you want to change philosophies after you've sold an investor or sold a customer on an ideal is actually very unethical. So that's why I'm telling people stick with what you said in that prospectus. Is that, that is important as, as, as practice, as this may be practice. It still, however, is important, all right? Very, very important, I, I kid you not. So save. 
And all of a sudden, you will see that your metrics will change dramatically. Well, not dramatically. Current price, $1, and you've got 1 million shares of cash. It's just math. You all would re recognize that. It's just like an Excel sheet. The amount of shares that you hold multiplied by the price of the share gives you the market value or the worth of the shares, correct? So that's what the default cash basically says. You've got one million and each cash, well, is worth one dollar. Nothing big, right? Each unit of cash. So you might notice the most important part for you this week will be weight. Remember asset allocation, 100% weight. No, let's add some stocks. Well, remembering what I mentioned to you earlier, which was that there will be no activity in terms of price. So I'm not going to make money or lose money at this point. So give me any stock that you want. Let's add about two stocks, and hopefully you've been researching some funds, mutual funds as well to invest, like Vanguard and whatnot, right? So give me a stock to invest in right now. Let me show you how this works. Tesla? 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 Yeah. All right, Apple second, Tesla first. You guys saw the pictures of Tesla that I showed you? I can't believe they put me in a hotel right next to Tesla. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I went, I went, I went, we only, um, late last week. Um, yes, I am, but you know what, come, come. Um, you could come. Just walk behind the camera. Yeah, thank you. I said, they're not signing a release. All right, so Tesla first. So you see now there's this section here where it says add new holdings. You see it? Everybody sees it? Perfect. You click on add new holdings and you get this drop down. You might see stock, fund, bond, and cash. You're not adding any more cash. You only have one million. I told you not to trade bonds for this part of the course. However, you can trade a bond fund. Yes, which you will do in the stock and fund section. Correct. All right, no problem. Do you see it now? Yeah. Right, good, perfect. So. Tesla, which is T-S-L-A, right? Yeah. Good. We choose Tesla. I go here and I would click on the dollar sign to get the current price, the most recent price that Morningstar has for Tesla. It may differ. Well, actually, no, I need to put in the date. Sorry. So, however, I am begging you, be honest at this point, because actually if I check through your results, I will know that you went back in time. Choose the most current day as you are making the trade. So since I'm making the trade today, I will use the 25th. I am not making the trade yesterday. I'm not retroactively making trades. So there's no reason for me to go to February 24th to pull a price. It literally is dishonest, okay? Yes? Yeah, you don't want to change the, the, the type of stock. No, 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 no. Choose the most current date. And if you make a mistake, that is you bought too little, sell it or add more stock. Don't, don't go back and try to change things. It actually looks fairly bad when I look at it. I, I can understand, but I can see those mistakes, all right? So add or sell according to if you do too much or too little. So, oh shoot, I chose the 24th, my bad. 25th. <laughs> and I'll choose, I click on the dollar sign to get the most recent price. That was the price as at the market closing around 335 California time. Actually, no, not closing. Yes, 335 California time. That was the most recent price that you got, 796. Remember when I went up to like $900? Yeah. I tell people, stop dealing with Tesla. I'm sorry? That's the most recent price. So since the market closed, that's the closing price. Right. Which differs from the aftermarket price or after hours price. Remember, I always told you close out your portfolio. Right. right. No problem. I'll show you how to do it. So let's say I bought a thousand shares, which means I must have calculated using that price a percentage of the one million dollars. Let's say if I wanted, let's use some math quickly to buy ten percent of. Um, my, well, sorry, let my ten percent. Sorry, let ten percent of my portfolio be equal to my holdings in Tesla. 10% of a million would be how much? 100,000? So how many shares would I have to buy in Tesla to come up to $100,000 spent in Tesla? It's basically 100,000 divided by 796 or six. So tell me that quickly, please. Or should I, actually, you know what? Let me be condescending. 
I'll pull this up so that students can see I can calculate too. So 100,000, right? Divided by 796 or six, that should mean 125 shares. So for argument's sake, let's say 126, right? Shares, right? And add, and then you, oh, look at how I almost forgot. The $10 commission that you must add for all trades. Okay? And then I add that to my portfolio. And then voila. You would see, that's why I told you guys don't freak out. This is how the red stuff is how Tesla performed today. Tesla lost value. It lost $37.50 today. In other words, the difference between the price Tesla opened at this morning and closed at is $37 less. It's not a terrible drop given the size, no. But it must have been Monday where you had a bigger drop. You need to look at the chart and look at for consistency. So that's why graphs are important. Yeah. Right here. Yeah, 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 right there. Yeah. No problem, no problem. And overall, because, don't mind this, because we invested in Tesla just now, even though the market's closed, it will look as if we lost $4,000. Because of the amount of shares we bought in Tesla. If, in other words, what this indicates is that if we had invested this morning in Tesla, we would have lost $4,000. But notice that the portfolio value has not fallen by much except for $10. The commission. Exactly. But so what you do, if you buy after hours to set up your portfolio for the next day, which I advise you not to do because of the after hours markets and how they can affect you the day, the morning, you would notice, well, don't freak out about this part. Focus more about this. Or, better yet, you will go to gain and loss, and you can see what your portfolio losses are actually, which is the unrealized gain or loss since purchase. In other words, if you don't sell any of your stocks that you buy, your profit you will see here. And the growth in your profit or the growth in your portfolio you will see here in percentage terms. So that's 0.01% is the commission, the loss because of the commission, okay? <clears throat> and don't mind the total year-to-date return because remember I told you guys about extrapolation, that, excuse me, in finance, where you calculate one day, <clears throat> you will try to go forward in time to see how it, perform, how it will perform for a year. So for you, this doesn't help you much. These two sections are important. The unrealized gain plus realized gain. The realized gain is when you sell. Anything that you sell <clears throat> and you cash in, it will go over here. So like if I had actual profit here, profit that I did not realize, so I didn't sell, it's just the value of the stocks going up. And I sold a portion, the portion of which I sold, the profit from that will be represented over here. So you realize profit and unreali unrealized profit, the sum of two of those give you your total profit or return. Wait, 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 Dwayne asked me something, yeah, Dwayne? Oh, yeah, oh, sorry, unrealized, unrealized gain, could you say it again? What is it, unrealized No, so unrealized gains, okay, if you haven't sold any part of your portfolio, you, you still hold all of your stock, right? You may have some cash on one side, but you've invested, and the value of that stock has grown. Then the growing, the difference between what you bought them for and what they're worth now is unrealized profit because you haven't sold them to sit on the cash, to have cash. If you sell, however, that profit is realized. Upon selling, your profit is realized, it's in your pocket, the actual cash is in your pocket. So that's the main thing. But more importantly, you can check intraday as well. I don't see much value for this except the 52 week high and 52 week low. And I'll end class by telling you all why that's important. And there are fundamentals as well that you can look at. Price to book ratios, price to earnings ratios. Remember I told you if you choose those to be something that's valuable to you, then you would know that you need to compare those to industry averages. And if your price to earnings ratio for a particular asset that you're looking at is lower than the industry average, it is seen to be a good buy, according to contrarians, because it's cheaper. Remember I told you that the first week? Right. 
So if you are somebody that needs to invest using fundamentals, you can use this session. If you are somebody that needs a bit more technical stuff, yahoo.com, which I will begin class with tomorrow and tell you how to use yahoo.com. Yeah? Oh yes, I forgot, the Gil meeting. All right, so you all need to decide via the group, you need to join Zoe's group. Uh, if when you would want to have class, I would prefer it sooner rather than later because I would want to show you how to do this stuff. You Yahoo Finance, Yahoo Finance, and not Yahoo.com. My apologies. Right, you can use that. You can start researching MACD, M-A-C-D. I'll go over that. I wished it was tomorrow, but I will go over that in class. Uh, what else do I need to do? Right. So let's add another stock really quickly and then move on. Right. And then. Thank you. I had asked somebody to do that. Tell, put that in the group for me, please. I need to actually talk to Fortress. Yes. <coughs> Go ahead. I'm adding new holders. Oh, by the way, it's Apple. Do we? Yeah. Apple. So A P P L. Yeah. A A P L. Go ahead. So, what if I didn't listen to you, right? And it turns out I didn't start after market. Can I change? After hours? After hours, mm -hmm. right? Can I change? Let's say I wanted to add. Uh huh. Can I change it from 10 to 15 in half hours? No, no. Add. add. Do one purchase, 10,000, and then add another five. Or then sell. If I know, if I need it. Why would you want to spend the commission three times? Remember, you can got to pay a commission for where you buy and sell. If you sell after you bought, then to buy back 15, that's three, that's three commissions you pay. Just do two. Or let me just say if you use it twice. I probably make a mistake and pay too much and bring it to the one. Right. Place. Right. I could do that in the aftermarket. You could do it, but the price won't change. This price does not reflect after hours trading. Yeah, because it's dangerous. Because you, 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 might, you can monitor after hours by going on to market, market watch and, and see if the price has dropped or risen and then make it play accordingly. But if you buy at a price too high at the closing price and it's higher than what the after hours market is showing, then you are going to lose money. Before you can even sell, you might lose hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars. So that's why I always tell you close, and I'm going to show you guys how to close out um, before we finish. So purchase price for Apple, most recent. Yeah, this looks right, 288. And I'm going to buy a thousand shares because Apple is just, no. Nah, Apple is beautiful, but not that beautiful. So let's say 500. And we add this, simple. So look at the weights of the portfolio. All of a sudden, Tesla is 10%. Apple is 14. So like you, yes, but you need to know how much weight you want in the beginning. So if you choose 50% as stock, then you need to know how to divide that up. You need to know the most recent price and do a quick calculation and just plug it in. Um, you gotta go online and search for them. All right, and then lastly, let me close out. Um, I can go to, <coughs> sorry, instead of adding a new holding, you go here. But Apple is withdraw in terms of sale. No, that's not what I wanted, sorry. In terms of selling, if I remember correctly, because I've not sold in a while, it could be this. AAPL, and it's 500 shares? Yeah. I actually forgot how to sell, but anyways, we will try. 500, purchased it. I guess you could have put negative 500 at the price, and let's see if it works. $10 commission, add. Right, it's not that. Let me figure this out really quickly. I cannot remember. Oh, the edit is to sell, right? Yeah. All right, thank you. Right here. Edit, click edit, thank you. Edit, and then go to buy sell. And you come here and do the sale. You choose the date, the amount of shares you're looking to sell at. I'm begging you all, do not edit these things too much. Because I will know. I literally take off on the market for the period of this course so to, to keep you honest. And 
Go ahead, man. All right. So when you do this sale, save it, and you would have closed out. Cause look at the weight. There's no, there's no Apple any longer, and eighty nine percent of your portfolio, well ninety really, is back in cash. And this is your job for no. So you need to do your research and choose your winners. Choose what you want based on your own investment philosophy. Right, to do that one more time, gain and loss section, unrealized profit and realized profit. Remember when I spoke about that? That's where you would see your profits. This snapshot, unfortunately, does not give you that. It just helps you know how much you bought and what the weight is and what the market value of that position is. You can look at my performance as well too, which gives you a little more insight. But if you're trading just for five weeks, you don't really get anything. Sorry? Um, I will show you all that another time because we ran out of time. But in terms of graphs, thanks for attending people that are like.